Welcome to the worship service at Memorial Rocky Mountain House. My prayer is that you will experience the presence of God's Spirit. And before we start our worship service, I would like to read as a call to worship Psalm 116, the first few verses. It says, I love the Lord, for He heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, because He turned His ear to me. I will call on Him as long as as I live. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God of promise and purpose, we greet you this day with thankful hearts as flowers open and buds unfurl around us. The beauty of your world lifts our heart in praise. As children grow and students prepare to graduate, their energy and enthusiasm encourages us towards your future. You lifted up Jesus to be by your side, and so we know he was always by our side as the future opens before us. Draw close to us in this hour of worship and show us the promise and purpose in our own lives. How we can unfurl with new life and move into the future with the energy of your Holy Spirit and the abiding love of Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you have called all of your followers to carry the good news of God's love and forgiveness to the ends of the earth. Yet we confess we cannot always find the words to tell others of our faith. We are often silent when others criticize the church that bears your name. We try to act out your love, but it's hard to tell others why we do what we do for you. Forgive our hesitation to share the gift you have given us and renew our courage to speak of our commitment to you. Thank you that we can unite with the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from John chapter 17. Our reading is from John chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. Jesus prays for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I come from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, 
and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture could be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. We all have experienced defining moments in our life. You know, the moment when your child was born, your first job, the time that you maybe immigrated to another country, or the time that you maybe lost your job. All of those things are defining moments. And in this passage in John 17, we get a defining moment. It is the defining moment of Jesus Christ. Verse 1 of chapter 17 actually highlights that defining moment when Jesus raised his eyes to the heavens and he started to pray. And John 17 is a beautiful prayer of Jesus. And he says in the first line of his prayer, Father, my hour has come. That is the defining moment for Jesus. My hour has come. And Jesus meant by that that the following day, he will be beaten up, he will be brutally abused by people, and he will be executed on the cross. His hour has come. Not only a defining moment for Jesus, but a defining moment for the whole world. But what is so amazing when you read the prayer of Jesus Christ, it is as if Jesus is stopping everything, not talking about the future, but he stops everything and he started to pray for his disciples. And it is so wonderful to know, it's actually incredible to know that the Almighty was praying for His disciples. And if someone were to ask you, what is your definition of prayer? What would you say? Well, I had a children's time one day in church and I did ask the little kids, what do you think is prayer? And then the one kid said, you know, a prayer is an invisible email. And I think that is a great definition of what is a prayer. It is an invisible email. Richard Foster, a well-known author, said the following, prayer is upward intimacy, inward change, and outward it spreads into ministry. That is also a beautiful definition of what is prayer. But I have a shorter definition for you what is prayer, and that captures the prayer of Jesus Christ in John chapter 17. David Lewis is a great scholar in the Lutheran Church in the US, and I read his remarks on this passage, and then he said, to pray is to love. Prayer is love. And I never thought about prayer like that. Prayer is love. And I think he's 100% right. That it is as simple as that, that prayer is love. And Jesus loved his disciples, therefore he prayed for them. And when we look at this passage, we see a few pointers for prayer. And we all need to look at our own prayer life, because if prayer is indeed showing love, we need to look at our own prayer life and see, does our prayer life really convey the love it should? Well, in this passage, we get at least two pointers about the prayer of Jesus Christ, and we can learn from that. Well, in this passage, in verse 6, he's praying for his disciples. It is actually a reminder of a blessing, because he's saying in verse 6 to his father, I'm so thankful for the disciples, because the words I have given to them, they have accepted as their own. 
So he's actually thanking God for his disciples. It is so amazing. And so he's blessing his disciples to his father in prayer. Now, the beauty of when you bless people, when you bless people, the joy doubles. Just imagine if you pray for someone and said, God, I thank you for my friend. Thank you that my friend spends so much time with me. I'm really thankful for my friend. And I thank you, God, that I have such a nice friend. It will double the joy of your friend. So Jesus was thanking God for his disciples. And this is what we need to do in prayer, is to thank God for the people in your life. A second thing that we can do in prayer is also to share our deepest hurt and pain and our stress levels. And this is what Jesus is doing this prayer. He's praying to the Lord that the Father must protect them. Because Jesus said, I'm going to you, but they remain in the world. They're not of the world, but they remain in the world. And it's going to be difficult for them. And that is the second thing of prayer. We share our deepest feelings, our anxieties, our stress levels. Because prayer is a time to be honest with God and to be honest with ourselves. So that is the beauty. And when we share a struggle, a pain, an anxiety, an anxiety it actually halves. As someone said, a shared joy doubles and a shared grief halves. So this is what we can learn from the prayer of Jesus. He actually thanked God for the people, his disciples. And the other thing is, he was real in his prayer. He was honest in his prayer. He said, life is going to be difficult for them. But I pray, God, that you will protect them. You see, what I like about the definition of prayer is love. It tells me that you really care. Because prayer is not telling God to pick up a remote control in heaven and just change everything. Stop that guy from not skipping the, the traffic light. Help me to get that job. Prayer is not changing things for you. But prayer is love. Prayer is not changing things for you, but prayer is changing you for things. Because when you pray, when you pray to God and thank God for the people in your life, your heart becomes more thankful. And when you share your anxieties, your, the things that really is difficult for you in life, it halves. That weight just halves. And this is what Jesus was doing. And this is what I like about the Bible. The Bible is current, it's clear, and it tells us that life is going to be difficult. Prayer is not a safeguard against all the difficult things in life. It is actually amazing when you read the last verse of chapter 16, just before Jesus started his prayer, Jesus said in the very last verse, just before he prayed to his Father, in this life, you will have it difficult. In this life, there will be trouble. And then Jesus said, but remember, I have overcome this world. And how did Jesus overcome this world? By giving us something that we do need and that you also get in John 16 verse 33, peace. I give you my peace. I give you my peace in the midst of a difficult situation. So prayer is not changing the things for you, but prayer is changing you for the things. Prayer is love. If you phone a friend of you and you just share something that makes you so happy, your joy just doubles. And when you phone a friend of you and you say, you know what, I'm going through a difficult time, I, I find this very stressful, your friend cannot change the things for you. But just knowing that you can share it with your friend, it is an act of love. It is to know that someone really cares. And that is what prayer is. Prayer is love. It reminds me of a story in a little town. And in that town, there was no liquor, there was no bar. So it was a town that was dry. And one day a businessman decided, you know, I'm going to start a tavern in our town. And some church people were not happy, some Christians, and they started to campaign and then they decided that they will one evening pray right through the night and 
to stop this tavern. And that same night, there was lightning and it struck the bar and it burned to the ground. And then the businessman went to the court and he sued the church because he realized that they have prayed for this tavern not to open. So he sued them. And then the church hired a lawyer to convince the judge, no, it's not because of the prayer. And then the judge, after his first deliberation, he said, no matter what the outcome will be, one thing is very clear. The businessman believes in prayer, but the Christians don't. Jesus believes in prayer and Jesus wants us to believe in prayer as well. Why does Jesus believe in prayer? Because prayer is love. Prayer is compassion. Prayer is care. And it's so amazing when you go to verse 20. In verse 20, Jesus says, I'm not only praying for them, I'm also praying for everyone that will come to faith because of the disciples. And we are faithful people today. We are people of faith today because of the obedience of the disciples. They have spread the word. The word. They have spread the gospel in the Mediterranean and from there it went all across the world. And we need to thank the disciples because Jesus prayed for them for our faith as well. And verse 20 says that Jesus is also praying for us because we are also the recipients of that faith. And that is incredible. Why does Jesus pray for you? Because Jesus loves you. Prayer will not change the things for you, but it will change you for the things. It will give you the deep peace in the midst of turmoil. And Jesus said just before he went to heaven, he said, I leave you my peace. May God help you in these days to do a powerful thing is to pray for people. I remember so well when my uncle was still alive, it's my dad's brother. He always reminded me that he prayed for me and my family every Thursday. And when my mom was still alive, there was no doubt of her prayers for us as a family, as well as all my siblings. It was there. And now my mom is not there anymore. My dad is in heaven as well. My uncle is in heaven. And I know of other family members who are still praying for me. I know it. And it changes me for things. It doesn't change the things for me. I have friends that's praying for me. And I like to do the same for other people. I want to conclude. The other day I was visiting a friend of mine, a friend of many years. And I was getting in my car after a nice visit. And he was just putting his hands on my arm. He didn't even ask, let us pray. He just started the prayer because it is second nature for him. And I drove back home and I realized he loves me. He cares because prayer is love. May this prayer of Jesus Christ inspires you to be a more loving person. And how do you do that? Just write down the names of your children, your grandchildren, friends, other people, the prime minister, the president, and pray for them. That is a great act of love. May God bless you. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you show us that we need to pray and thank the people in our lives, that we need to thank God for them. Thank you, Lord, that we can also bring all our problems to you. Not that you will take it away, but you will change us. You will give us the peace that we need. And thank you, Lord, that when we pray and when other people pray over us, we realize it is an act of love. Help us, Lord, to become stronger and better in our prayer lives. We pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. God has given us so much to be thankful for. And the best way to thank God is by giving. And because of COVID, we will not have the offering, but I want to thank you for sending your offering to the church 
to maintain everything and also to continue the ministry of Memorial Presbyterian Church in Rocky Mountain House. Let us pray for the blessing of the offering. God, I thank you that we can pray for the offering. I pray that your blessing will be upon this offering, that it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom in Rocky Mountain House and all over the world. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless us and so that we can be a blessing to other people. We pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. Wherever you go, God is sending you. God is sending you with the love of Christ in you. And God is sending you with something else, the opportunity to pray for people. Because to pray is to love. And may God help you to pray for people, to pray for them on a consistent basis, to show people and to show God that you really care and that you really love. May the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the presence of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you wherever you go. Amen. Oh,